Today's video lecture will be on ACL reconstruction. This is pages 263 to 270 in your ortho book. The following objectives will apply for ACL injury. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the etiology for the ACL injury, identify special tests associated with the ACL injury, and describe the clinical presentation of this injury. You should also be able to describe precautions and safety considerations during the rehab process and choose appropriate therapeutic interventions consistent within the plan of care for the rehab of the ACL injury. If you have not done the pre-quiz, you need to stop and do that now. It's going to help you with your anatomy review. So what is the mechanism of injury for an ACL? Most commonly, it is um, occurred, occurring in a closed connected chain manner consisting of hyperflexion, rapid deceleration, hyperextension, or landing in an unbalanced position. It typically happens in closed kinetic chain positions with contact sports or activities that require high levels of agility. Other facts on ACL injuries will be found on the following slides. Female athletes have a significantly higher ligament injury rate compared to males. Why do you think that is? Approximately two-thirds of complete ACL tears have an associated meniscal tear, and tears of the ACL will most often occur mid-ligament, not at the ligamentous attachments. There are two types of tears associated with an ACL injury. They can be partial or complete. If you look at these pictures, you can see the difference. In the partial upper picture, there are some fibers that are torn. In the lower picture, the fibers are completely torn mid-ligament. And then if you look at the side picture on the right, that's an avulsion where the ligament actually has detached from the bone. Special tests for ACL injuries. The anterior Lachman's test, the anterior drawer test, the lateral pivot shift test. You need to review the videos and discussion for positive signs for each of these tests. We will now discuss non-operative versus operative management of ACL injuries. So how will Dr. Welby decide if Mr. Rose needs surgery to repair his injured ACL. Non-operative management is usually indicated for grade 1 and grade 2 sprains. Operative management is most indicative for grade 3 sprains. Surgical approach will include either an autograft or an allograft. An autograft is where the physician will take the patient's own body tissue, typically the patella tendon, and they will use that tendon and reroute it as an ACL. The physician might choose to do a semitendinosis graft. That is where they'll take part of the hamstring and then create a new ACL and put it in the tunnel to allow it to function as a new ACL. The other choice for grafting might be an allograft. This is where the physician will use a cadaver graft instead of an autograft. Now we need to discuss the healing of a graft. When the graft is harvested and surgically routed in the keep, the keep is the tunnel, it will go through a process of avascular necrosis for six to eight weeks. During that time, it will lose strength and it is very fragile. Therefore, excessive loads and forces need to be avoided during these early stages of healing. At about three months, the graft will begin to vascularize and increase tensile strength. 
to about 50% of its original strength. The graft may take as long as a year to mature. Typically, after um, surgical intervention, the physician will have a specific protocol that we follow. So you need to think about what types of medications your patient will be taking post-op and what side effects you as the PTA need to consider. What treatment setting will you most likely work with with the patient who has had an ACL reconstruction? Why do you think that is? First, we will talk about the maximum protection phase. That's day one through six weeks post-surgically. What do you think your goals would be in this phase? If you answer decrease pain and edema, increase knee range of motion, increase lower extremity strength, increase flexibility, and increase balance and proprioception, you were right. But you also need to recognize that that healing graft needs to be protected while you're trying to accomplish those objectives. The graft might be protected by wearing a range-limiting hinged knee brace. This brace will prevent any anterior tibial translation, shearing forces, or rotational forces. So what motions should you avoid? Weight-bearing status will be per MD orders. It could be non-weight-bearing or partial if the meniscus or other ligaments are involved. If it's just the ACL, it's generally weight-bearing is tolerated. What type of therapeutic interventions will you in, um, implement during the maximum protection phase of rehab? Remember, patellar mobility is very important as hypomobility may limit range of motion. The patient may also be sent home with the use of a CPM. What will your role be with the use of the CPM? What therapeutic exercises will be appropriate in the maximum protection phase? What activities will you implement to increase range of motion? Remember that that graft is still healing. You want to try to encourage quad control and hamstring strength. Again, be mindful of that protected graft. If the graft was a patellar tendon graft, then hamstring strengthening needs to be emphasized. If it was a semitendinosus graft, then quad strengthening needs to be emphasized. What about flexibility? How about balance and joint proprioception exercises? What do you think you can do for those limitations or impairments? When do you progress to the moderate protection phase of rehabilitation? The patient must be full weight bearing with proper gait sequencing. Range of motion should be 0 to 120, good ham and quad control, controlled pain and edema, and don't forget about that timeline that was up at the top. How about the focus of the moderate protection phase? Continue with the reduction in pain and swelling. Focus on closed kinetic chain and proprioception activities. Brace can be DC'd about 5 or 6 weeks, as directed by MD, and controlled strengthening. What criteria will you use for minimum protection phase progression? Full range of motion, normal gait, no brace, improved strength of hams and quads, pain and edema control is needed, and this is about 12 to 13 weeks. Remember that the min protection phase is tailored to the individual, gradual return to normal function, progressive closed kinetic chain proprioception, and a custom brace may be needed for return to sport or higher level activities. The non-operative rehab is similar to the post-op approach 
and you'll follow those same precautions. But the primary difference in a conservative approach is the progression through the phase of rehab. Do you think it'd be longer or shorter? Max protection phase is generally 2 to 4 weeks, MOD 3 to 12, and MIN 10 to 16. So what do you need to do next? Complete the assignment that will be provided via NGRADE and watch the videos on special tests for the knee. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video lecture on the ACL injury.